Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we've got the ultimate handheld showdown. Well, at least when it comes to the CPU or rather APUs that we're gonna be using in most of the handhelds on the market today. We're talking about Windows handhelds. We've left the Steam Deck out of this. But when it comes down to it, we've got three main chips that are on the market right now. The Ryzen Z2 Extreme, the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, and of course the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. I've got three popular handhelds on the desk right now, and for the Z1 Extreme test bed, we're gonna be using the ROG Ally X, but keep in mind, there are other devices with that Z1 Extreme, like the Legion Go S and even the Legion Go. Next up for the Z2 Extreme, we've got the all new MSI Claw A8, and uh, there are other devices coming to the market with the Z2 Extreme. Lenovo has already announced the Legion Go 2, and the ROG Xbox Ally X will also have this same chip. And finally, for the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, we've got the MSI Claw 8 AI. Couple other manufacturers do have this chip in the handhelds like One X Player, but these are very evenly matched across the board when it comes to battery life and everything like that. But the main thing we're gonna be covering in this video is performance out of these three chips at a 17 watt TDP and a 25 watt TDP. Jumping right in here with the main differences between these three chips, over on the ROG Ally X, we've got that Ryzen Z1 Extreme. We've seen this time and time again. It's based on Zen 4. We've got eight cores, 16 threads. It's got a boost clock on all cores up to 5.1, 12 compute unit RDNA 3i GPU up to 2900 megahertz. And we've got 24 gigs of RAM running at 7500 mega transfers per second. When it comes to that new AMD Ryzen Z2 Extreme and the MSI Claw A8, we also have eight cores and 16 threads, but this is based on Zen 5, and it's arranged in a way where we've got a base clock of two gigahertz on all eight cores, but keep in mind, we've got three Zen 5C cores that'll clock up to five gigahertz and five Zen 5C cores that only clock up to 3.3. It's rocking the Radeon 890M iGPU, so we do have 16 compute units based on RDNA 3.5, does up to 2,900 megahertz. And with this, we've got 24 gigs of RAM running at 8,000 mega transfers per second. As for the MSI Claw 8 AI, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. This is much different. We've got eight cores and eight threads and an all core base clock of 2.2, four performance cores up to 4.8, four efficiency cores up to 3.7. And when it comes to the GPU, we've got the ARC 140V. Got eight XE2 cores. This will clock up to 1950 megahertz and 32 gigs of on package memory running at 8,533 mega transfers per second. On paper, definitely looks like the Z2 Extreme is coming ahead with those Zen 5 cores, but the Z1 Extreme does have that higher all core clock of 5.1. We're gonna start out here with a CPU benchmark. We've got Geekbench 6, and this is at a 17 watt TDP. At the top, we've got the Ultra 7 258V coming in with a single core of 2,712, multi 8,247. Taking a look down the list, I mean, at a 17 watt TDP, the core Ultra 7 258V is coming ahead of the Z1 and the Z2 in single and multi at 17 watts. But as soon as we take it up to a 25 watt TDP, the Z1 and Z2 are coming ahead of the Ultra 7 258V in multi-core, mainly because we've got those extra threads, eight cores, 16 threads, as opposed to the 258V's only eight cores and eight threads. And the Z2 Extreme is just nudging ahead by a little bit in single core performance, but that Z1 is falling behind. I also ran 3D Mark Time Spy to check out the iGPU performance, and I'll tell you the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V at 17 watts and 25 watts is coming ahead of the Z1 Extreme and the Z2 Extreme. But I've noticed with these Core Ultra chips and these newer iGPUs, specifically the 140V and the 140T, synthetic benchmarks do come out a bit higher, and this is not indicative of real world performance. But yeah, if you're looking at benchmarks here, that Core Ultra 7 258V is even beating out the Z2 Extreme. Now it's time for some side-by-side in-game benchmarks. First up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p, and what we're seeing now is the 25 watt run. I also ran these at a 17 watt TDP. 
afterburner on screen. And when the 140V was initially launched, it really fell on its face when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077. No matter what I was doing with it, I was getting really low FPS. But Intel has been doing an amazing job with these ARC GPU drivers, be it for iGPUs or desktop GPUs. And performance has almost doubled from the initial launch, which is pretty crazy here. And at the end of this benchmark, remember, Steam Deck preset, 1080p, 25 watt TDP. Over on the Z1 Extreme, we averaged 41 FPS. On the Z2 Extreme, that goes up to around 46 FPS. And on the Core Ultra 7 258V, we're averaging 54 FPS. Now at a 17 watt TDP, that Core Ultra is still coming ahead, which I thought was pretty impressive. On that Z1, we averaged 32, Z2 Extreme, 39, and on the Core Ultra chip, 42 FPS. Next up, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider, low 1080 with no scaling, so I'm not using XESS or Fidelity CAS here, all at a 25 watt TDP that we're taking a look at right now. And at the end of this one, the Z1 Extreme averaged 59 FPS, Z2 Extreme up to 64, and the 258V came ahead of that Z2 by just one frame up to 65. But when we drop this down to a 17 watt TDP, that Z2 Extreme has beaten both of them out. I also wanted to test out Forza Horizon 5, and just like Cyberpunk 2077, when this 258V was launched, I had to take these settings way down to get good performance out of this game, and it's an easier one to run. Medium settings, 1080p, 25 watt TDP, Z1 Extreme came in with an average of 76, that Z2 Extreme up to 80, and the Core Ultra 258V at 83 FPS. And of course, we tested at a 17 watt TDP. That Z1 was up to 62. Z2 Extreme beat out the 258V by one frame here at a 17 watt TDP. Black Myth Wukong was the next one I tested, and we're not using frame gen here, but we are using a little bit of scaling. And on the AMD chips, we're using FSR. On the Intel chip, we're using XESS, both set to balanced. Low settings, 1080, 60% res scale, 25 watt TDP. Z1 came in with 44 FPS on average, Z2 up to 49, and the 258V, 50 FPS. So the Z2 and the 258V are really trading blows here at 25 and 17 watts. You can see here at 17 watts, the Z2 came ahead by one frame, but remember at 25 watts, the 258V came ahead of the Z2 by one frame. And the final game we have here, I only tested at a 25 watt TDP because uh, between these three chips, I don't think this game's very playable at 1080. Of course, dropping it down to like 720p gets us a bit more. Low, 1080, FSR on the AMD stuff set to balanced, XESS set to balanced on the 258V. On the Z1 Extreme, we averaged 30 FPS. Z2 came in with 31, and the 258V came in with 37 FPS on average. And if we dropped all of these down to 720p, we're still not going to see a huge jump with this game. It's just something about it. And this game is even Steam Deck verified. Personally, I do think it's kind of unplayable over on the Steam Deck. But either way, I mean, some people have been able to get by with it just fine. When it comes down to it with the games that I tested in this video, the Z2 Extreme and the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V are right on par with each other. I mean, it really depends on if you're going to be running at 17 watts or 25, which one's going to come ahead by one or two frames. Not a huge difference here, but both of these chips are beating out the Z1 Extreme, and we kind of expected this would happen. And I'll tell you, 258V has been on the market for a little while. Intel's been doing a great job with their GPU drivers. We've been seeing massive gains in some of these games from initial launch. So I do think that with the Z2 Extreme, we're going to see a nice little hike over there also. So in a few months, I might retest. But right now, I mean, it's really up to you. If you want to go with Intel, you could do that 258V. If you want to go with AMD, I would choose the Z2 Extreme over the Z1 Extreme right now, unless you can get a really good deal on a Z1 Extreme device. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I had a lot of people asking about this, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick one. If you've got any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on any of these chips here, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.